Hi everyone, this is Tracy from WeCraft at Home, uh, back on the Tattered Lace Digital Magazine. And I've had a lot of people having difficulty with um, actually doing the project over onto the Scan and Cut before they put it together. Because the videos that Scan and Cut do are literally just putting together. They don't show you how to cut it all out and everything. So I'm going to try my best to help you out and do that. So first of all, I'm going to go to the full screen. And this is the first project I'm going to do. I'm, go I'm also going to do the tiger one. And then I'm going to do the one that's like a hat on an easel card. But I'm going to mix that one up a bit. So, first of all, we'll, we will do it exactly as they say. So with this one, we're going to print out like they've asked us, like they've shown you too. So the cardstock 701, that's the actual card base. So if you do what it says there and cut everything out, you're going to first of all cut the card base out from white card. And then it says cut Wild Fuchsia A and B from their Charisma files. I'm going to have to come out of there for a second. I'll go over there. So number seven. For that, you go into the Charisma, there's A and B. So you have to print out A and B first. And that's all it is, is pr printing that out. Okay, so this one is fairly straightforward. So what I'm going to do is just put i'll show you what i've done and then we'll just put this one together but for the tiger one i'll go through everything with the scan and cut so you print out a and b and then you go over i mean i use canvas workspace i find it simple and easier to deal with than putting it on a stick and going over so as you can see, I'm already in the drawing files. We need number seven. Again, you still go in the Charisma files, but you choose A. And when you do that, that's what comes out. Now, they've done the lines so that there's a little bit up here because um, in the first one, when you sent this file over, um, you had to bring it down but now they've done it so that it's um, in the place where if you put your charisma sheet on up to the lines it matches so all you do is send that over um, what I've been doing because I don't want to be bothered with these cutting lines I've been deleting them but you can do that over at the machine so you do file export and just send it over like that transfer FCM file I can do it via the internet or you can do it through a cable or put it on a USB if you're doing it on a USB you press export and choose your USB down the side to save it to that and take it over okay and you're going to do that with all the files a, B, C and D and the Wild Fuchsia and what you're going to do is send it over one by one and print them out as well. So if I just show you quickly, I want to show you the Wild Fuchsia. And what I'm going to do, I should have got rid of the other one first, apologies. They'll be at the bottom. So that's all then. I'm just going to delete all them. So you can see there's no fine line details because you don't need it if you, well, you don't really need it if you're using the Charisma because there's enough colour and detail for you not to need it. If you still want it, then what you need to do is go back 
and use this one. And that is the detailed one. Excuse me, I should have sent all this over. Let me just group it a minute. Now we'll do it. So it's this one you need, dye detail. And we're going to group that. You can use Control G if you prefer on your keyboard. And what should happen is that one of these should match up to one of these. My computer has decided to go slow. There we go. So all you do is match every one up if you want the detail cut in and still use the lines and then you would bring it all over and put it back where it was and then you can have detailed with the charisma if that's what you want I personally wouldn't do that but that's how you would do that so you cut all the pieces out as it says um, and then we'll go over to the craft table afterwards and I will show you how to do it all. But before we go over to the craft table, I want to go to the next project because this is the one I've seen a lot of people doing it actually and working it out. I think it's a beautiful, I couldn't wait to do this. It's just lovely. Um, and this, again, I've done it exact to what they tell you to do. There is a lot of uh, printing and cutting out on this one. So this is the Wondrous Wilderness A. If you print out all your charisma, you're going to need it all. So, if you print it all out, lovely background there. They're very, they're very straightforward. So, I'm going to show you. I think tigers are on E, D or E. Just check. Okay, this is only a little bit, but that's where the tigers are. So I will show you this one on the scan and cut. So all I've done is print, make sure it's on actual size, because um, that's the only way it fits the SVG images that we're going to send over. Don't fit to size or anything else, it's actual size. Okay, everything else is all right, so I'm going to print that. And then I'll see you over at the scan and cut. Actually, before I go, I'll just, uh, just go through the rest of it while that's printing. So, Wondrous Wilderness 1 and 2 are the card shape that you have to map together, but we'll do that over there. There it says do A, B, C, D. It's easier to do it this way. I found it easier to do it this way. It's just to print everything you know you're going to need. So D, I think they're the trees if I remember rightly, and E. So you know you need all of them. And then you know you've got to cut one and two from the... from here, one and two. And also, I think there's a few more. Uh, I think it's 13, 16, 16 is the sentiment, I think that's all you need from them files, the rest of it is from the charisma, so 1, 2, 13 and 16, so it looks bewildering like oh look at all that but you don't need all of them, the rest are if you are not using the charisma files, so and the draw file is the sentiment that they've used. If you want to use a different one, that's up to you. 
Okay, let's get over to the scan and cut then. <clears throat> Okay, so first things first, you can see that I've put the charisma on so that it's smack up to the line. And the reason that I've done that is because the extra two lines that come out have been measured so that this is in the same place. That's how it's supposed to work. Now I'm just going to... Okay, so I do have um, an SDX, so your stuff might be different. But the first thing you do is bring on the cut file that you send over. So, for me, it's retrieved data through the internet. And you can see that my cut file has come on. So the next thing you need to do is to scan in with this and start, that will scan it in and as you can see I've done mine on light because if you do it on dark so if you press the spanner if I show you on dark, you can't see the lines properly. You can see the picture clearly, but the lines are not so great. So I always leave it on light. And you can see there, it is exactly over. So I don't really want the cutting of all the lines. You can clearly see that the rest of it is over the right way. If you wanted to check it, you go edit and it comes in close and then if you press this it will come in even closer and you can see it is exactly over because of these two lines that have helped put it in the right place. So I'm happy with that. If you wanted to move it, let's go back you make sure the one you're moving has got the red box around it and then move it to how you want. They're all separate in there um, so you can move one by one and then I know now it fits. I know they tell you to use the box but you can see sometimes the box doesn't fit exactly but as long as you're happy with the inside of it you'll be fine and then if you use these to go round that's the box I delete that because we don't need to cut it and there we go and then you go to cut I'm just going to pause it so that I can move the camera and you can see it a bit better. Okay, I'll press start again so that it'll go back before it carries on. Now mine is done on, um, it's more thick paper than thin card because my printer doesn't take thick card so um, I have to do it on quite light card so I don't think that makes much difference on the cut because it's an auto cut so it will go to the the right um, depth. Okay, I don't know about anyone else, but for this one, it was all perfect.
perfectly in place for me for all the other bits that I cut. This is the last one. Um, and there we go. And it's all cut out really nicely. If there's um, any that people are having particular difficulty with that want me to do a video on, you can uh, let me know and I'll do the best I can. Anyway, that's the scan and cut bit done. Now let's go make cards. Okay, so we're going to start off with the tiger one. Um, seeing as that seems to be the most awkward one. Um, so I've, I've done all the bits, like I said. Um, this one seemed to be very easy to fit into the Charisma, so I'm hoping you didn't have too much trouble with that. So, so what we've got to do, that is going to be like the front of the card. That is where the backing paper is going to go. I think... So that is going to stick like that. So we have to stick that bit to there. And... I'm going to do it before we stick the background on so that we can hide the tab. In the video she sticks the tab and everything first but I mean she sticks the backing paper first so that she can do it flat and obviously I'm using wet glue because that's what I work with and that one's stuck Let's see where the other one is A bit of give and it's pin flare so it grabs nice and quickly so that has to go like that on there make sure that it meets the crease line at the back like that and then stick this back in on so it covers the seam. That's how I would always do it. You're still doing it flat, she says, you know. But I prefer to have the, the, the workings of the card covered up, so. Obviously, you have to do it how you prefer to do it. Gone a bit wonky there. See, that's why glue so much better in my eyes. There we go. That's better. This blue strip is for the bottom. I only have an Epson printer and it does not take nice thick card. Um, in future I probably wouldn't print this out, it's a waste of ink. I would probably just get a bit of blue card and cut that if I'm being honest. But you know, when you're doing things like this, it's always easy to do it as they say first before you start mucking around and trying to change it. There we go. So I've done that. And then the cave has to go this side so make sure what you're doing 
is right so that you can get the cave on the right side. That's why it's better to put the card together first rather than you're still matting and layering it flat. Seems to be fitting the charisma bits quite well, but the card is leaving a few gaps. I don't know if that's me, my printer. Can't see how because it's all cut out the same, isn't it? Okay, I guess it still looks okay. And then the next bit is to stick this tab down. Which sticks along here on the blue bit. Right to where the fold is. Take the edge to the fold. And then push down. So you should get left with that. I'm just going to Really good if you've got something that will go in and push it down. Okay, so that's the base of the card then. I see, so it still folds flat. Okay. make sure it's stuck properly first. So then I think this brown bit is to hide the white inside, inside there. So we'll glue that. And you just feed it through like that. So the tigers. Okay, let's do these two bits first because we know. So the blue bit, like the bit we just cut out, we know that's just a surround for the tigers. Again, not necessarily needing to do the charisma, you could cut it out on plain blue card or whatever colour you want to do. So it mats up like that. And then there's a bit of decoupage you can use. I'll just use my uh, pin flare for this actually.
So I haven't put a lot on and I'm just going to rounded it off a little bit but not well enough. And what you really want to do is bring it round and then make sure that is flat where the two bits are because that's how it would go. So that's it finished. And then it's just working out. Doesn't come Okay, so I just went back and watched the video. She seems to have stuck it onto the smaller side. Okay, I've got it. So the blue shows inside. <laughs> well, that took me a while to figure that one out. So, the little bit is to stick them on. It takes a while because she doesn't really explain it. I don't know. So, I've stuck it on the little piece. Now that seems to be what the video says although her bit is blue in the little piece so I'm not sure. It's better because then it's it's blue for the easel and then I think you stick the big piece to the front of the card but you need to know where roughly because of your oh, I haven't done the white piece so because of your stopper you need to work out where you're gonna okay I've got it so stick the stopper on before you stick it but it's it's done so that the blue is the bit that's shown inside, which I prefer. I was a bit weirded out about why they'd leave it white. So I do prefer that it's blue there. Um, and I also, I think the stopper could have been maybe looking like the sky at least, or um, like a tiger print. Um, I've got some nice tiger print card, maybe I'll use that next time. Um, and then the trees, the trees are very simple, they're just done for you like that. And it's up to you if you put them outside, maybe behind the tigers for when they stand up, or inside. It does look nice inside, I've got to say. So we'll put a couple of bits of foam tape where we think the trees might come out a little bit. I'm only going to do a couple. And for the trunk, I'm, because we want the tree to come out and not the trunk, I'm going to glue it. So see, I've only done a couple of bits of tape. just to give it a bit of um, uneven exposure, which is what a tree would be. It would be standing out more in some places. And then I think I'll stick it inside. I was going to do outside, but I think for the size of them, they're better inside, to be fair. So I'll 
do this first bit of stopper just to show you how to put it all together. I think it's a very boring stopper personally, but the card itself I adore. Tigers are my favourite things. If I could, I would have a pet tiger, sadly. Okay, so it's, I want a little, tiny little bit of blue showing, because that's just how I like it done. And then with this, you're gonna glue the back or tape, whatever you wanna do. I have to forgive the marks, I've obviously got pin flare all over me. <laughs> okay, so I've made sure it's... You want to make sure the fold is meeting the fold at the back, like that. Oh, there we go, that's better now you can see. So the fold of that is meeting the fold at the back. Yeah, see it comes out a little bit. I don't understand that. So it would have, she says put the thing on first, but I think it's better to put the tiger. Yeah. I'm just using some glue to stick it back down. Just uh, a quick fix. And then the tigers are there. Like that. They're definitely cute, aren't they? Oh, I've moved the heads. Oops. Definitely cute, definitely a lovely card. I've got another tree as well, but you don't want to see me sticking the same tree down. But there, I mean, obviously it's got a few layers and then it's got the sentiment. But um, that's the way to do it. And I hoped the part of the scan and cut helped you. If you've got any more questions, let me know. I'll see if I can answer them. I'm not tattered lace. I've got nothing to do with tattered lace. I just uh, think the magazine's really confusing and trying to work it out is really hard. So that's that for now and now we're going to go and do the last project which is the hat one um, but I'm going to change it up and use different stuff for it. Show you how to use your own thing and everything. See you in a bit. So as usual I am getting way ahead of myself and I forgot to do the first project so we'll do that quickly it's again it's fairly straightforward they have done this bit on video but it's it cuts in one piece like that the two there fold like that mountain fold and then the two folds on the outside of valley fold that is all it is this will be going in the middle like this and then these on the outside so if we stick these down first it's a very straightforward one but I do like the card shape I've done the sentiment but it's come out tiny so that would go there I'm gonna sort that out and maybe what I would do is um, soften the edges with some ink same as here I'm not sure I would want to leave that just plain uh, I did work out you can cut out you can cut out some inner circles and maybe ink that or cut them out in that and do it 
and have a nice extra bit of colour. That's what I would do. I don't like leaving anything just plain. But the base of the card is like this. So that stands out. And then they've put just some fuchsia around the, so with the sentiment on, they've put the fuchsia around it like that, which is lovely. But I'm going to change it because you can hardly see the sentiment. I haven't done it big enough. And then you've got the bow that you can use to put either on the fuchsia or maybe up there. But I would definitely add something here, so... All I'd done was got the rectangle, the big one, and I got the circle, the green circle, and done a cutout so that we knew it would fit perfectly in there. So, if anyone wants to know how to do it, I'll let me know and I'll do a short video on, on how to do the extra panel for that. But it was very simple. So that's a very simple one. Now let's get on with the one that we changed everything on. Okay, so for the third and final project, uh, I want to do this one, but I find the one they've done a bit bland. And I thought it would make a spectacular Mother's Day card. So what I've done is chosen some of the papers and I'm going to print them out and then cut them out of some pretty papers rather than just, you know, I find, yeah, like I said, this is a bit bland and there's a better sentiment as well. So again, I've gone through the list and I've actually made notes of it so that I didn't get lost. So, out of white card, we need to cut one and two for the cardstock. And then for me, I want the doilies in white. So, this one, this one, and the one down here. I want them in white I think they'll look nice and crisp if they're in white but for the small circle and the bit around the hat and this bit here and obviously the top of the hat under the doily I'm going to do in I have chosen Okay, so I chose this paper because what I was also thinking was that we could possibly put a fuchsia there or there as an extra. So I just thought the fuchsia papers would go nice with it. But then I wanted um, a green to match the leaves, which I could not really find anything apart from stripey now for this circle I think a stripey background would look out of place just you know little bits of green coming down it didn't look feel right to me so I have this paper and I will put it on my website and my Facebook page if anybody would like it but this to me felt the perfect kind of paper for for what I wanted so I printed one of them out as well I'll be cutting out in the flowers two of the circles so it's I want number eight which is the side to the hat let's go back to precious please number eight is the side of the hat and then we want the smaller circles and number nine 
circle which is the top of the hat so I think 11 and 12 is if you want the flowers and leaves and yeah I'm going to cut it all out and I will see you over at the craft table and we can put it together differently so it's the same style but I just want it a bit prettier and oh apologies the Mother's Day again if you go into the drawing files there's one I love you and appreciate you I'll get it up mm. I thought it's a perfect message for Mother's Day although it is a bit big so we might have to do either a bigger circle or a different shape tag I love you and appreciate you all that you do all that you say and all that you bring to my life so I'm going to do that as a Mother's Day card and probably cut it out obviously it can't be that big but I will size it so that it will fit onto the sentiment circle maybe size the sentiment circle a little bit bigger because I don't think it will hurt let's have a look I don't think it will hurt for it to be a little bit bigger or maybe maybe oval or something yeah anyway I will fit it in and I'll see you over at the craft table then so card base is just a card base it's an easel card base obviously so there we go that's how it goes and this extra circle that was number two you just add to the card base like that remember to only stick it's easier to stick this so you know where you're going it's perfectly matched over and it's only glued half of it so that's the basis now what I've done we're doing the same card we're just doing it in a very well, not a majorly different way but I've used that green paper that I showed you so one excuse me the one with the cut across goes down on the bottom and what I've done, the inner circle that's dotted, I changed it to a drawing file and just drew in darker ink around it and then this one is for the actual topper and I said I used that, um, the fuchsia paper and that goes there, same thing I'd used a darker ink to go around the edges now for the topper rather than using another bit of card because I cut all the flower bits out in one piece I the toppers will go like that and then this is for the top of the hat but because the as you can see because that part of it goes over it it covers it so rather than use another piece of paper I just cut it out the middle of that and then we stick the hat on top so let's just stick some of this down
comes out a bit better on a few pads. Now the number nine circle, again I took the inner out of the, the main one, although I printed it onto the little one so that it matches the toppers, but they don't tell you you need to cut two of these out. So just remember that and what you're going to do, this strip you're just going to fold all these over And then one side you're going to do just, you just want a little blob of glue on each one. As you're holding it you can turn it and make sure that it's bending right. You might have to hold it a couple of seconds on each piece So now I'm just going to put a bit of glue on the edging to put that together. So now top piece on and this is going to be a bit easier because you can just do a circle around so just making sure it will all go into the right shape And then we want the other doily on top of the hat and we'll do the same thing and 3D it because I think it looks better. So then that would go there like that. just so that I can push it flat and make sure it's completely over okay so so far we've got that and then what I would do is either look say that that's it's not the same green because it's it's from the other set but either a bow on top or actually get a ribbon wrap it round and put it on top um, they'd done the flowers, I wasn't quite so keen on that. But um, then I've got the fuchsias, because they make you cut out so many. I thought it might go nice either on there or just on there like that. Well, maybe it's too busy. Yeah, it might be too busy. What about if we took the leaves off and put them with the, the leaves there? But then we've got the sentiment, which I seem to have lost. I can't find it. So anyway, that is my take. So the sentiment I showed you on the, on the, uh, on the computer anyway. The sentiment would go there. I've risen just a little bit more, but although that's enough to make it the easel card. So I hope you enjoyed that.
I hope it has helped a little bit more than tattered lace themselves. And like I said, any questions I can answer, I will. Uh, I don't work for tattered lace, but I do use canvas workspace in my scanner cut all the time. So I, I do know I can help with SVGs and things like that. So I will do my best. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye for now.